I feel like I should uh, introduce myself <laughs> to everybody. I'm Pastor Dave. I've been gone for three months, uh, but it's wonderful, wonderful to be back worshiping with all of you uh, this morning. Uh, gosh, I'm going to see if I remember how to do this, because it's been a little while. I might be a little bit rusty. There might be some new faces this morning in person or online that I haven't met yet. If that's the case, I'm looking forward uh, to meeting with you. I've been away on sabbatical, uh, but again, it's a joy to be back, and so I look forward to uh, getting to know you better and reconnecting uh, with all of you as well. Uh, if uh, you're with us in person this morning, if you would take a moment to sign the red guest books, let us know you were here, that would be great. You can also use those green prayer tree cards, which should be in the pew rack in front of you. You can... Uh, share a prayer request on those if you have one this morning. Um, if you're with us online, go ahead and check in on Facebook or leave us a comment. And for prayer requests, you can also just leave us a comment if you're okay sharing it uh, publicly online. Or, of course, you can just call the office anytime during the week. And however you share your prayer requests with us uh, today or during the week, it will be our honor and joy to pray with you and for you. Friends, let's join together in worshiping God, beginning with our call to worship from Psalm 37. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in the Lord and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for safe homecomings and joyful reunions. We praise you this morning for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. Oh God, we ask as always that in our worship this morning, you would be glorified. Be honored this morning, Lord. Be with us this morning, O oh Lord as we worship you. We pray this together in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand and sing together. Please join in with me as we confess our sin to God, saying, O oh God, you are rich in love, and for your sake, Jesus Christ, you have spoken words of mercy to us, our sinners. You have replaced our guilt with joy. 
our rebellion with righteousness, our punishment with pardon, our shame with salvation. Now, by your Spirit, make us fluent in mercy, so that we can forgive as we have been forgiven. Make us one in your people, in every tribe and in tongue, as we have courage to proclaim the gospel of Jesus with one voice through Christ. Amen. Let us take a moment and confess our individual sins in silence. Be kind and compassionate one to another. Forgive each other as God forgave you in Christ. For as you forgive others, so you shall be forgiven. In Jesus' name, we forgive those who have sinned against us. Hear the good news. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us and rose for us. And anyone that is in Christ is a new creation. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, it is a clear promise in Scripture that because we are forgiven in Jesus Christ, we are now at peace with God. There is no more rebellion, no more enmity between us and God. There is peace. And there is peace among ourselves. And so we celebrate that peace by passing the peace of Christ. And the way that we do that here, which most of you are already familiar, familiar with, is by standing and taking a few moments just to greet one another. And if you wish, you can say, the peace of Christ be with you and respond by saying, and also with you. We'll do that for a few moments and then join hands and sing the Gloria Patri together. Friends, let's stand and pass the peace of Christ. Oh my goodness, we got up and walked around. Good job. Your donations to Lamore Presbyterian Church are changing lives in the name of Jesus and making a difference in God's kingdom. To, to give, you can either use the offering plates, which will be coming around the sanctuary, the offering box in Fellowship Hall, or you can give online at our website or through your online banking. However you choose to give, we are truly grateful for your generosity. Ushers, will you come forward, please? Lord, thank you for your many gifts to us. 
take our offering this morning and use it to glorify your name and establish your kingdom. Amen. Well, good morning. I really like coming here to worship. More not, you know, there's like Tachi, uh, is it Palace? Yeah, yeah I, I was a pastor in Las Vegas for 15 years. That doesn't bring me down here. Coming to be with you is really a joy for me. So don't think, uh-oh, what's the, what's the problem now? When the executive presbyter shows up at your church, it's not because of any problem, unless I come with tears already flowing from my face. And, uh, and I probably come to a session meeting before I come to worship. So the network of communication will have already uh, prepared you for uh, any kind of negative thing, which I don't anticipate, and I don't think you should either. I tell you, it's a beautiful place here on not only Sunday mornings, but I think any time you come here, right, there's always joy when you gather, even when you're here because someone has died, because they've died in the Lord, and you come grieving your own loss, but celebrating because a dear sister or brother is God's own child. And the way to extend that testimony and that legacy, one of the ways that we do it, is through, in our presbytery, a few years ago, we started this Vision 2020 campaign. It was a capital campaign to give capital support to some of our new ministries, our new worshiping communities, and new church plants we were anticipating here in the Central Valley, and then COVID. That's how most of our stories end, right? <laughs> we said we were doing, we were planning this, and then COVID. Well, COVID hit. There was one great thing is uh, Lemur, your, your church here and two or three others had made a commitment and followed through. And I am very, well, first, I thank you from the Presbytery of San Joaquin, and I thank you personally. And I hope and pray that you continue in maintaining all your commitments, particularly to Vision 2020. 
Now, the new things. First, we have a new address. I brought uh, many more envelopes in which to give. I brought more brochures, left them on the desk. You can pick them up at some other time, but don't mail in the envelopes. We've had our uh, mail compromised over the summer, so we've got a P.O. box now. And the address here has the, the physical address of the office in Visalia, but we hope not to have any mail delivered there any longer. Uh, that's so if you are inspired to contribute individually to Vision 2020, just put it in the offering plate, give online to Lemo, you know, Lemoore Presbyterian Church and put Vision 2020, and the money will eventually get to the presbytery and be put to the use in which you direct it. Uh, most of our support for Vision 2020 has been for new worshiping communities and continues to be new worshiping communities, and most of them are Hispanic ministries in the Central Valley. That's good stewardship on our part, right? You know where you live, and you know your neighbors. And they are not just your neighbors, but they're your siblings in Christ Jesus, and they have a lot of good and great work to do that neither you or I with great intention can do nearly as well as them. One of them is a satellite church established from the Corcoran Church in Hanford. And one of the connections we have, we hope that they're going to move into a larger place to worship because they filled the smaller Lutheran place. But one of our congregations that was dismissed or left in, Han in Han First Presbyterian in Hanford is uh, entering into conversation to welcoming this PCUSA new worshiping community, Agua Viva, into uh, their facility to house it, to nest it, to allow it to grow larger. As Pastor Ramon Palafox, the pastor of the Corcoran Church and of this new worshiping community says, the fish grows to the size of the fish tank and he's looking for a larger fish tank. And uh, Vision 2020 will support that. Uh, along with ministries in Orosi and Sanger, in uh, Fresno and Madera with La Roca, uh, which is establishing not only a congregation, but an after-school uh, child care, young people care uh, place, which is desperately needed, and then a uh, daycare center and a preschool eventually, which is desperately needed in that part of town, well, in almost every part of any town in the United States of America these days. Uh, and then uh, there is also two plans for church, the, the usual church plants in Bakersfield, in an area of tremendous growth, and in uh, Madeira, just on the other side of the county line from Fresno, uh, uh, near the uh, Children's Central Valley Children's Hospital, Valley Children's, whatever their name is now, uh, near there. Plus, plus ongoing support for Woven in Fresno, which has also uh, incubated other smaller new ministries that are, uh, that, that open a way back into the life of the body of Christ for people who had never considered it because they saw the church as something that it ought not be. And so uh, Woven has incubated an art collaborative, a uh, new mother's group, a justice ministry. And finally, and this is one of the great joys of being Presbyterian and being connected, so a uh, Presbytery executive from uh, the Los Angeles area gives me a call. He's become a friend of mine. He gives me a call. Hi, how you doing? I go to visit him because I go to L.A. every now and then. And then he calls me and says, you know, there's this group of uh, Punjabi Sikh. You know, they used to be Sikh well, from Punjab, and they want to start an, a church in Fresno. I said, oh, that sounds good. And so a uh, pastor comes up from uh, Pasadena. We meet in someone's house the first time, 20 people. 
I drive up, my car is 11 years old. It's seen better days. I'm waiting for it to die. I can't buy a new car until that dies. <laughs> right, I mean, you know, that's also good stewardship in my mind. And I pull up and it is the, 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 the ugliest car on the block. All these folks have come in with their new big cars and filled this house, uh, Muslims, Sikhs, Hindus, and Christians all gathered in Christ's name in this place. So it's this new Indie Pakistani new worshiping community that's not in our brochures, that's not on the envelope, but will need initial support. Not for long, but will need initial support. And I'm excited about the vision that we have in this valley as Christ Presbyterian Christians. And I hope and pray that we share that vision and I ask for your continued support, not only as a congregation, but individually. And if you have a big idea and you want to share it with me, you can talk to your pastor. And then through your pastor, we can meet together and we can do, we can think of all sorts of wonderful things to do. I'm meeting with someone from another church who wants to make a legacy gift for his congregation and for the Vision 2020 campaign. If you hadn't thought of that, you don't have to. Now you know you can do that. God bless you in your faithfulness, in, in the way you joyfully express what it means to have life together with Christ at the center. And I hope to see you again often. I do, because it really is a pleasure to be with you. Thank you, and God bless you. Good morning. Let's have all the children of all ages come on up, please. We got lots of them this morning, too. All right. Look at all these kiddos. You going to join us, Roselle? Come sit here. Come here. Okay. Go sit right there. Go right there. Good job. Look at you. Wow. All right. Well, I have a light this morning, and we're going to sing a little song. How many of you know the song, This Little Light of Mine? The you all know it. Yeah. I need everybody's. The I, Luster Moon. We're, we're going to sing this today, okay? Okay. All right. So this little light of mine, let's sing. And while you sing, I'm going to wave my light around, okay? This little light of mine. It is shine. Wait a minute, wait a minute. My light's not shining. How come? What? Oh, I have to plug in. Technology. That's oh, why. technology. And you know I don't do technology, huh, Lincoln? All right. Here, you hold that for me. All right. We're going to plug it in and ruin our lives. Oh, I'm Shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, shine, let it shine. All right, that's good. That's good. Now, no more shiny. Okay, we'll turn it off. No more shiny. Okay, all right. Now, you know what? My, my, uh, the light there couldn't work without electricity, could it? No. So it had to, it had to stay, it had to stay plugged in, right? And my, and my teacher has electricity. That's good. That's good. All right. Well, it reminds me of a story that Jesus told his disciples, and he didn't tell them with a light. He told them with a grapevine, and a grapevine has branches. 
and that branch has to stay connected to the grapevine, or what happens? Yeah, it dies. So this poor little branch, vine, it's not connected anymore, so it's going to... It's going to die, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to grow. Oh. There's always a positive side here. Okay. Yes. Oh, okay, let's keep going. All right. So, Jesus tells us that if we are with him, connected to him, we will grow fruit. And that fruit is like gentleness, kindness, faithfulness. But most of all, he wants us to love one another like he loves us, right? You're just a talker this morning, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, All right, the first reading this morning is John 15, 1 through 4. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Kelly. Good job with the children's sermon. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And he meant it, folks. He meant it. That don't hinder them. There's a part of us as adults, if we're honest, sometimes there's the instinct to hinder. Shh, you know. Jesus said, let them come. Let them come. So thank you. Speaking of thank you, I, the first thing I want to say this morning is thank you to all of you, to this congregation for making possible the sabbatical that I took for the last three months. Three months is a long time, I know. But it would not have happened without your encouragement, without your support. And I am truly grateful. To the whole congregation, uh, of course, especially to the staff and the officers and the sabbatical task force uh, that picked up some of the reins and filled in some of the gaps. And, and I'm sure there were some heroic individual efforts here and there to get things done and, and fill in places that may have been completely behind the scenes. But however it happened, thank you. Thank you so much for making it possible. The sabbatical was, it was more restful than I knew I needed. And it was more renewing than I thought was possible. I hope that all of you also found some rest and renewal with God while I was away. Now, the theme of my sabbatical was thin places. Some of you, if you've got the newsletter when we were preparing for it, you read a bit about it, but thin places was the theme of this sabbatical. There's this ancient Celtic saying that heaven and earth are only three feet apart, but in thin places, that distance is even less. Thin places are just places in the world where, for whatever reason, it just seems like heaven and earth are closer. It feels like the presence of God is closer and easier for us to notice. I'm not talking about anything strange having to do with magnetic poles or you know whatever. I'm just saying there are places 
And I think we've all experienced this. There are some places where it just feels easier to be close to God. It feels easier to pay attention to God. We notice God's presence more. It's brighter, it's louder, it's, it's more beautiful. Those are thin places. And that's what my sabbatical was about. It was about spending time in these thin places. But before I talk a little bit about my own experience, I'm curious, what are some thin places for you? Because again, I, I am sure that we've all experienced them, even if we didn't have that term to use for them. So if a few of you wanted to just share really briefly, you don't need to share a backstory or context, but just what are some thin places you have experienced in your lifetime? Gene. Yeah, Calvin Craig. Calvin yes. Absolutely. That is certainly a thin place for me as well. Calvin Crest, the conference center that, are, that belongs to our presbytery that many of us here have uh, camped at and been on staff at. Uh, thank you, Jeannie. Any other thin places? Virginia. Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe. Great. Where else? Family reunions. Family reunions. Absolutely. Any other thin places? Jim. Woods on our farm when I was a kid. Woods on your farm. Yeah. Anybody else? Any thin places? Lincoln. Yeah, the trip that you and your dad took to the gold uh, gold rush area in the mountains. Absolutely. Yeah, thin. Here. Here. He missed. Yes. Monterey Coast. Definitely a very thin place. Wonderful. I noticed that nobody mentioned the baggage claim area <laughs> at the airport. Although I can tell you, having spent time there recently, there were several people mentioning God's name at the baggage claim area. So, you know. There are thin places. And they might be different for each of us, but if we are paying attention, this world is filled with thin places. There are thin places all around us. Now for me, my sabbatical involved three basic kinds of thin places. There was the mountains, there was the ocean, and then there was what I called the wilderness. That was my trip to the Faroe Islands, which I'll share more about. It's not completely a wilderness, although some parts of it are. It's, it's a country with people and all that, but for me personally, it was a wilderness experience. Traveling alone, a place I've never been, all that kind of stuff. So mountains, ocean, and wilderness. And I certainly met God in these places. But I also discovered a place that was thinner than all of them. A place that also turned out to be closer than all of them. In fact, I think it is the thinnest and the closest place in the whole world. This morning, I'd like to tell you a little bit about it. I even have some pictures from uh, some of the sabbatical travels to share with you. Before I do that, though, I would like to read uh, part of the opening of Paul's letter to the Colossians, because it offers us some important clues about the nature and the purpose of thin places. So let us pray. Well, Holy Spirit, Come and illuminate our lives today with the light of your word in Scripture. Make thin this sanctuary and make us attentive to your presence among us and within us, continuing the work of salvation until the day of Christ. Amen. So this is Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 to 27. Paul says, now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, 
which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Again, this is the word of the Lord. So Paul says he was commissioned by God to present the word of God in its fullness to his readers. Now that sort of suggests that there's such a thing as the word of God not in its fullness. That there's such a thing as a, we might call it a partial word of God. And in fact, for centuries, many believers have considered this partial word of God to be creation itself. This idea that all of creation, everything we see and hear in nature around us, bears witness to who God is. It sort of speaks to us. It declares God's word to us saying, there's a God who is big and powerful and wonderful and who made all of these things. We even see this in Scripture. Scripture says that the heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. There's a popular hymn that invites us to join with all nature in manifold witness, right? All of nature witnessing to God and inviting us to join in that witness. In another of Paul's letters, he said, Since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly seen being understood from what has been made so that people are without excuse. Creation itself is part of God's word. It bears witness to God. But it's not quite the full story. It's not quite the word of God in all of its fullness. That revelation comes later in Jesus Christ. But this idea that that creation gives us some sense of the existence and the nature of God doesn't really surprise us because we've been there. Again, we've all had these experiences of thin places. We can all remember a time when we felt close to God, maybe even got to know God better in creation, in the beauty of nature. Maybe it's a beautiful sunset over the ocean, a mountain peak that we just hiked to, whatever it might be, this moment where we are closer to God and we get to know God better through creation. We have been there. We've seen it with our own eyes and heard it with our own ears. It doesn't surprise us that the word of God also comes through creation. Now, I was fortunate in this wonderful sabbatical experience to spend a lot of time, sometimes alone, sometimes together as a family, in the beauty of nature listening for God's voice and resting in God's presence. I'd like to share with you some photos of the thin places I visited, if for no other reason than to just prove to you that I did the things I said I was going to do. Uh, We got to spend some time as a family uh, in the June Lake and Mammoth Lakes area. So this is from Mammoth Peak, looking down at Mammoth Lakes and uh, the mountains behind. I mean, It's just kind of enough said, right? You go to a place like this with a vista like that, and it's easy to see how that would feel like a thin place. Go ahead and go to the next one. I'm going to try not to take too long on these, because I could be here for a really long time. Um, And even though you seem happy to have me back, I don't want to push my luck this morning. So (laughs) another part of the Sierras from the same peak, a favorite of mine, those are the minarets. If any of you have spent time in the high Sierras, you're familiar with those. Mount Ritter, Mount Banner, and then a variety of other peaks. Uh, off to the left. Just a gorgeous view. Uh, Stayed up there and enjoyed it. Took the picture, but then just soaked it in and enjoyed it for a while. Go ahead and go to the next one. So Calvin Crest. Jeannie mentioned Calvin Crest as a thin place. Certainly a thin place for me as well. But most of us don't get the chance to look straight down on the island in the lake. I've got a drone. It's a nice, fun little toy. And so I flew it around one morning. This was before the sun. Well, the sun was hitting the tops of the trees, which is why they're a bit brighter. But you can see the fallen log, which just happened to make a natural bridge out to the island, the road going by the lake. Uh, The serenity of that place, especially at at 5 a.m., is is truly remarkable and a thin place indeed. I spent quite a bit of time in prayer there. Vespers, if you know Calvin Crest, is just out of the the frame down below. Uh, But I went out to the island as well and Tell you what, if you're ever looking for a, a great place to pray, if you feel up to crossing a log bridge, I highly recommend it. Let's go to the next one. So 
Calvin Crest is beautiful um, in the big picture, but part of what I got to do that morning is get, get up close. There is some real beauty up close. Uh, that is a blazing star flower. After I took that picture, I had to go find someone who knew what it was called. I didn't know, but found out it's a blazing star flower. Just incredible. And I wonder sometimes how many thin places like that that are so small, how many do we walk by every day? Whether it's flowers or something else, things that are easy to miss, but that bear witness to the glory of God. Let's go to the next one, lupine. Similar, uh, you know, it was right next to it, uh, just a different angle, uh, but catching that morning light and the purple uh, really showing through, just beautiful, beautiful scenery up close there at Calvin Crest. We'll go ahead and go to the next one. <clears throat> okay, I couldn't help but throw this one in there. So my brother and I got to do this backcountry trip for a couple of days. This is one of his favorite uh, fishing spots. And I mean, it's not much in life that brings you closer to God than a 19-inch brown trout. I, I mean, for me at least. I, it was catch and release. I put it right back. It survived just fine. Uh, but it was, it was a lot of fun to catch. But just being there in that river canyon for two and a half days, uh, just the silence of it, um, the beauty of it, and the adventure of trying to catch that fish. I can, even any anglers in here, I can tell you more about the story of actually landing that fish. It was not easy. Uh, and my brother got quite wet uh, getting that up to the shore. So I'll tell you about that later. Speaking of water, we got to go on a whale watching trip while we were in Santa Cruz. Um, I mean, if you've ever been whale watching, you know that that doesn't quite do it justice. Uh, but we actually had the wonderful problem of having like a dozen whales all surrounding the boat in every direction. So they were like, oh, which one do we go to? Let's go try this one. So we got some great views of God's beauty uh, in the whales and the nature on that trip. This is also from Santa Cruz. This is one of the lighthouses near the harbor. Some of you might have seen it before, but you get there in the right moment. It catches the right light. You take the picture, and it kind of stays with you in that, that wonderful image. All right, we'll do the next one. This is um, this was Big Sur. So I did a few days by myself at the new Camel Dolly Hermitage. Uh, in Big Sur, sort of a silent retreat. But because it's Big Sur, I also drove around a bit. And this is Pfeiffer Rock. This is at Pfeiffer Beach uh, along the coast. Most photographers will gather here in the evening because when the sun sets behind it, there's a shaft of light that comes right through that cave, that opening, through the rock. Now, it doesn't really work when it's clouded. And I was only there for one day. I wasn't going to be able to come back. So you make do with what you can, and you still take the picture that you want to take. And uh, it's still just a beautiful uh, landmark in that spot, and I spent hours at that beach. This is McWay Falls, also a uh, Big Sur area. I mean, a waterfall into the ocean, come on. That's, that's a thin place, right? The glory of God, uh, just a beautiful, beautiful location. Um, a few more tourists in that spot, so you have to kind of manage that too, but a uh, wonderful spot to be. We'll go to the next one. This is Huntington Lake. Family has a cabin up there. We spent some time over Labor Day weekend. And it's beautiful as it is, and a thin place as it is, but you go down to go fishing one evening, and there's one thunder cloud that passes by, and then you get this. I mean, I mean, come on. It's just <laughs> a double rainbow over the lake. God speaks through the beauty of God's creation. It was wonderful. Let's go to the next one. Uh, That's really that, yeah, I was trying to play chess on a larger chessboard, and it, uh, no, it looks like for some reason one image is not working, and that's all right. Will it let you go past it to the next one? If it will, we can just skip it. Interesting. Yeah, well, okay, so for as long as it shows, okay, so this is getting into the Faroe Islands. This is that uh, wilderness experience for me. If you're not familiar with it, the Faroe Islands is sort of, between a triangle of Iceland, I don't know how to do it for your view, but Iceland, Norway, and Scotland, way up there in the North Atlantic Ocean. Um, look at that place. That's just, that's just a hill. Like, that's just normal. That's everywhere in the Faroe Islands. That's just what they look like all the time. Just an incredible and an incredibly thin place. We'll go ahead and go to the next one and see if it works. And, Yeah, I don't know either. Oh, yeah, we were going to test it out before worship. It didn't really work. Yeah, how funny. Okay, let's see if it, there we go. Okay, 
This is also the Faroe Islands, the village of Gasa Dalur, which has 11 people living in it. Uh, up until 2008, you had to hike into it over a mountain pass. That was the only way in or out. Um, but they made a tunnel through the mountain. And there's a waterfall into the ocean, right? Another thin place. That's the Mula Fossar waterfall. It is iconic. You will see this. Maybe you have already on like Amazon screensavers, smart TV screensavers. Like that image is everywhere because of how beautiful and iconic it is. You just show up and it just looks like that. It's effortless. It's, it's, it makes you look like a good photographer, I'll tell you that. All right, we'll go to the next one and see if it works. Any of these that don't work, I can share more of these another time as well. Some of you have seen these on social media if, you're, if we're friends on social media. This is the Drangarnir, which is, sounds fancier than it is. It's just Faroese for sea stacks. Um, but this sea stack in particular is sort of the famous one. And I mean, look at that thing. The way that it launches out of the water, it's this, this rugged, uh, permanent thing and it, with the, the Atlantic Ocean raging all around it. It doesn't look like it was raging because it was a long exposure, but that, that image right there is probably the main one that drew me to the Faroe Islands. At some point, someday, I don't remember where, I saw that and I said, I've got to go to that place. And that's part of why I'm so grateful for all of you helping make that happen. That was a once in a lifetime experience. All right, let's see if any others show up. <clears throat> oh yeah, that was the last one I wanted to cap it off with. But this image itself is also from uh, the Faroe Islands. In fact, that is Tinholmer, which is just behind the sea stack you just saw in the previous image. So that sea stack is off to the left from this angle. But there's, I mean, I took that picture. I just opened the front door to the place I was staying and took the picture. That's where I was staying. It was phenomenal. You guys, the sabbatical was filled with thin places. I spent time in prayer in these places, taking pictures, of course, and video, but I met with God in these places in ways that I'm still trying to figure out how to describe. Thank you, it was truly wonderful. Now, these were all beautiful places. They were all thin places, I met God in them, but as I said a little bit earlier, I discovered a place that was thinner than all of these beautiful, amazing places. And it was much closer than all of them as well. It was right here. Right here. The thinnest place in this whole world is the human heart. It's not the mountains, it's not the ocean, it's not the islands, it's not the wilderness. It is within you. That is the whole truth that Paul was trying to tell to the Colossians, the word of God in its fullness. He said it used to be a mystery. We look at creation and say, yeah, there's some kind of a God, but some people end up believing in one God. Some people believe in lots of gods. We have lots of world religions. The belief's kind of all over the place, right? There's a mystery to it. We don't know everything just from creation. But Paul says that mystery has now been disclosed in Jesus Christ. And here's the mystery. Christ is in you. The hope of glory. Not up there on that peak. Not up there. Not hovering over the ocean. God is not out there in the beauty of nature waiting for those with the physical or financial means to go and see him. You can go there and you will meet God there. And that's a great thing to do if you can but that's not where God is. Repeatedly in these thin places, I heard God saying to me, I'm glad you're paying attention to me here. I'm glad we're getting this time, but I'm not here. I'm not in these mountains. I wasn't waiting for you at this beach. I'm within you through Christ, and I have been the whole time. If heaven and earth come together anywhere, it's in Jesus Christ, right? One person, fully divine, fully human, that's what we believe. Jesus Christ is the ultimate thin place in the whole universe where heaven and earth, where human and divine come together in one and Christ is in you. You are a thin place. 
all the time and everywhere you go. It's like that old saying, wherever you go, there you are. Wherever you go, there Christ is within you. Yes, in these beautiful places, but yes, also at church. Yes, also in the grocery store. Yes, also changing diapers. Yes, also washing dishes. Christ is within you. That is the hope of glory that we have. And not just in you, but in every person that you meet. The person next to you is also a thin place. Every human being that you see anywhere is just as thin of a place as you are. A place where Christ dwells or wants to dwell. Every person is a thin place place. You want to see the real thin places for my sabbatical, if the technology allows us? Let's show the next set of pictures if they work. <laughs> go ahead and go to the next one. Do these every few seconds. Sword fighting at Calvin Crest. It doesn't get better than that. Those are the thin places of my sabbatical. That's where we meet Jesus Christ. You also, and me, and each other. We meet Christ in each other, folks. We meet Christ within our own hearts, anytime, anywhere, but we meet Christ in the face of everyone that we see. Your spouse is a thin place. Your children are thin places. Your friends and your neighbors are thin places. Strangers and immigrants and refugees and the homeless and the sick and the dying are thin places where we can meet with Jesus Christ. The people who will vote differently than you in November are thin places. Your enemies, the people who have hurt you, the people who have failed you in your life, even they are thin places where Christ dwells or wants to dwell. Every time you meet another person, you have the chance, if we are paying attention, you have the chance to meet with God as well, with every other human being. The thinnest place in the world is you and the person next to you. Heaven and earth join in Jesus Christ, and Christ is within you. Friends, ponder this good news. Savor this good news. Believe this good news. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. One of the joys of being back, one of the things I've missed is praying with you. I've been praying for you, but it's a joy to pray with you. If you have a prayer request this morning, just raise your hand and share it. I'll jot it down. We'll pray together uh, at the end. Any prayer requests this morning? Yeah. Andrew. Uh, pray for my mom and John. They have the high blood downstairs. Thanks, Andy. Prayers for Andy's mom um, as they travel to Iowa. And Don, you said Don's dad is not doing well. Thank you. Other prayer requests this morning? Yeah, Luella? Luella, brother in law, having our replacement surgery on Friday. Thank you. Of course. Other prayer requests this morning? Chuck, did you have one? Yeah. What was his name again, Chuck? Dave Payne. Prayers for the family of a good friend of Chuck's who passed recently, Dave Payne. Yeah, other prayer requests this morning. Yeah, Virginia. Yeah. Is your nephew Curtis, you said? For Virginia's nephew, Curtis has uncontrollable high blood pressure. So prayers for him and for his doctors as well. Other prayer requests this morning? Yeah, Nick. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. Prayers for everyone affected by a hurricane and ongoing prayers for Ukraine. Yeah, thank you. Any others this morning? Friends, let's pray. Oh God, we thank you for your faithfulness in hearing and answering our prayers. We thank you for this creation of yours, which does indeed speak and proclaim not just your existence, but your character and your love. We thank you most of all for that fuller word, that revelation of yourself in Jesus Christ, and for the good news and the mystery that is hard for us to comprehend that Christ is within us and that that is our hope. Not that by loving you or following you, we can improve enough, be good enough, fix our lives enough, but that you give us your own life, that we may share in Christ's own death and resurrection, so we can give up the charade of self-improvement and simply trust in your grace. God, we do pray for this world that you've made. We pray for all those affected by the hurricane as they rebuild and recover. We pray for peace in Ukraine. We pray for peace in Iran, for human rights, for women's rights, and for peace to return to that region. We pray for Andy's mom. They travel to Iowa and for Don's dad as well. Lord, may your grace surround and be sufficient for them. For Luella's brother-in-law, as he prepares for surgery on Friday, may it be successful and may his recovery be swift. Be with Chuck, and Chuck's, the friend of Chuck's family who passed away, and for all who grieve his passing, Lord, be with them and comfort them. We pray for Bethany and William as Bethany is um, Left on the ship for a few months, we pray that you be with her and all with whom she serves. Be with William as well. We pray for Virginia's nephew, Curtis, with high blood pressure, that you watch over his health and guide his doctors. God, we pray for the Presbytery, for the Vision 2020 campaign, for its ongoing success 
and for the new worshiping communities that it benefits and the wonderful ways that we see your Holy Spirit moving in those new ministries. God, we thank you for them and pray your blessing upon them. God, in all of these things, we long for your kingdom to come. We pray for it together now as Christ has taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Invitation to communion. We're going to be doing things a little different this day. Um, we're going to be breaking bread together in Fellowship Hall. What we'd like to do is have everyone, if you'd like to get a drink, have a seat. Yeah, get a drink and then um, grab some salads, whatever you would like, and pick a seat. Then we have loaves of bread at the table, so each group will be able to break their own bread and enjoy. And I think that's it. Okay, so let's stand and sing our parting hymn. There are lots of thin places in this world. And by all means, as you leave this morning, go looking for them. Pay attention. Notice in your daily life, 
in your vacations, wherever it may be, look for God in these thin places. But remember, God is not far from you waiting in those places for you to show up. Because Christ is with you on your right and on your left. Christ before you, Christ behind you, Christ above you, Christ beneath you, and Christ within you. The hope of glory. Remain in him even as he remains in you. Let's go have some communion. Amen.